How much is like one cow head? One thousand three hundred Kenya shillings. So about thirteen dollars. I think this could feed like four people, right? Four. Eight. Three? Eight. Eight people. Eight people. Mm. I meant four giant. It's very juicy. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Kenya, the heartbeat of East Africa. Kenya is world-renowned for its huge national parks and iconic wildlife. But I'm here for the food. Oh, this is heavy to move. We're diving deep in Nairobi, the capital and largest city in Kenya, with a population of over 6 million. A lot of people still just have that one reality of like, ooh, the people in some plains in dry, arid area and there's drought and there are flies in their eyes. But that's not like a clear picture of what Nairobi is. There really is much more to this city. Today is all about the meat. Piles of it. Dude, that's quite a steak right there. <laughs> From grilled... Do people ever just eat it? ...to boil. I don't know if we can even show that on the internet. It's all here. By my side, travel writer Wendy Wata. She grew up in Kenya. Now, through her writing, she demystifies the enchanting wonders of this country and beyond. How would you describe Kenyan food? Lots of carbs, lots of meat, a bit of vegetables, you know, just to seem like you're healthy. Mm -hmm. Together, we're taking on Kenya's meatiest. We have come to the church of meats. Juiciest. I'm feeling it. Drippingest. Wow. Protein-packed plates. So get ready to dab off those meat sweats. We're taking on street food in Nairobi. Good morning, everybody. Today we are in Kenya. We have arrived in Nairobi and we're checking out some of the food along the street. And right here, we have our first victim, our opportunity, <laughs> our first food. Exactly, yeah. Right now, we're on the edge of Nairobi. This roadside stall popped up six months ago, serving local favorites like chai tea and egg chapatis. Do you have like a fun slogan or a fun saying for your restaurant? Like, chapati's so good, <laughs> your face will explode. Yeah, you have too many platforms. Too many, specifically including us. So chapati, the origin is from India. Mm. We have a very big Indian community in Kenya. So we typically have it for breakfast with tea. Sometimes we have it for lunch with like a stew or yeah, however you want to do it. How to make an egg chapati. Mix wheat flour with water, constantly kneading until firm. Flatten it, then to make it more flaky, add oil, roll, and repeat. I want to say these look incredible, and I've never tried one in Kenya before. Cook on both sides on a hot pan, then the egg. Fry, place in the chapati, fold, and you're gold. Just need to wash it down with some local tea. Welcome to Kenyan Starbucks. Some people have a coffee culture, we have a tea culture in Kenya. Right here, you just have milk, water, tea leaves, that's it. So it's gonna boil here for a while. Yeah. How do you know when it's done? Because it's going to rise and start like pouring all over the place, like oh, a volcano, okay. yeah. We have a couple utensils here. We're not going to use our hands? Not, no, use your hands. What are these for? I don't know what these are. Oh, we, oh, we do just, use our just hands. Just put them to the side. So there's an egg here. Oh, yeah, there's nice an egg inside. Nice flat egg in the middle. We're going to roll it over. I mean, this thing is so plump, heavy, a bit greasy, and piping hot still. And we're just going to take bites out of it? Yeah. Like a pizza? Like a burger. Like a burger. Mmm. I took a huge bite. Oh, it's so hot. The okay. flavors are simple. It's yeah. like salt. Egg. You see the flakiness, layeredness mm. I was talking about? So mm. if you tear this apart, then it comes off like that. So oh that's why God. they roll it several times. The texture is my favorite part. Yeah. It just has a nice chewy, doughy feel to it. Mm. Around Kenya, like what is some of the food that really like makes you feel at home? So all Kenyan food makes me feel at home. But one thing that really surprised me was last month I was up in Turkana. When they're roasting this goat, then they leave the skin on. And that gives it like a very nice and leathery, smoky texture. Is that something we're trying? No. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Well, good yeah. surprise though. We got a side of tea, water, milk, tea leaves. Cheers, yeah. Mmm. They put sugar in too, right? Yeah, they put sugar in, yeah. Sweet. A little kind of diluted flavor. Yeah. Not super strong or creamy. Nice way to start your day and wake up in the morning. <laughs> no doubt. And it's a good pair to this really like, greasy, heavy breakfast right here. Mmm. We reached our next destination. What is the name of the market? Kenyatta Market. So this is like the eating area where we have different restaurants that serve up different cuts of meat. But today we're out here to eat some cow head. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Our next food is not winning any beauty contests. In fact, the look alone might make you think twice. But I say, don't think, just chew. We are at Migingo Nietu. Migingo Nietu. 
Okay. This is Kennedy, the restaurant owner, and he's been serving cowhead for more than 20 years. How much is like one cowhead? 1,300 Kenya shillings. So about $13. That's a pretty good price. I think this could feed uh, like four people, right? Four? Eight. Three? Eight. Eight people. Eight people. Mm. I meant four giant It's very juicy. Okay. <laughs> Animal heads. They're a real treasure trove of varied textures, degrees of fattiness, with an appropriate level of mystery. Like that tuna head I had in Japan. Here's a whole giant tuna head. It's got muscle and fat striations in the top of its head. There's so much meat in here. Time to do the same with a cow head. Start cutting off the skin and then off with the ears. It's very quickly not looking like a face anymore. It's the eye. You see the eye of the cow. Are you gonna eat the eye? Yeah, it's very sweet also. And you can see well also. What about eating these ears? You can eat here better. What if I eat the balls? Eat the balls now, you. Yeah. You can see the tongue coming out now. Oh, this is all gonna be just one giant meaty chunk at the base of the skull. Oh my, oh, this is a huge amount of meat. I did not expect to find all this inside this cow head. I'm very delicious. So off with the whole cheek. Dude, that's quite a steak right there. <laughs> this will boil for three hours, but in the meantime, Kennedy has another succulent cut waiting for me. Have you had pig feet? Of course, yes. What's better, cow feet or pig feet? The cow is sweeter. And we can eat everything here except the bone. Except the bone. Really, it's like a lot of skin and fat. This is good for the colon. My colon's gonna be so happy after this. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. I'm gonna give it a little salt and cheers. 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 Thank you. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know what? That would be perfect with beer. It has such a bold flavor, a strong flavor. Precisely. Nice texture. Mm. Makes you want to drink. Yeah. Where's the beer? Yeah. Oh my god. Now I'm ready for more foot though. So we have the final cow cheek, we have the tongue and kind of everything beneath it. And the next step is we just gotta start cutting it up. What do you call this knife? It's, it's shocker. The shocker. The shocker. If you wear the cow face and you have this as a weapon, you could be a, a terrifying serial killer. Precisely. Uh. So this is a cross section of tongue. Some like, fat beneath, there's a muscle kind of below that controls below the that tongue. Temple. You know, the hangy ball thing would be about there. This is the throat. Oh, yeah. If you eat more throat, you know what you can do better then? I tell you, you can talk better. Oh, talk better, that's yes. right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I would love to try a piece. Oh, thank you so much, sir. Wait for me to start together. Yes, of course. Oh, you've got good instincts. That's exactly how this works. You ready? Cow tongue from Kennedy, thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty good. Beautiful. It does have some sweetness it's to it. Super. Mm. Mm. That is a great texture. It's like a heart meat, mm. like chewy, a little chewy. Oh, I like that. Can I take this you one? Another one? Yeah. Mm. You think I'm? Oh, you think I'm joking? I like it. <laughs> Do you like the chewy meat? Mm. Proper exercise for the jaw. Chewing is my favorite kind of exercise. Cowhead, one of the world's underrated meats. I would be devastated if I didn't share my new meaty discoveries with Wendy. When you said cowhead, yeah. I thought there would be a cowhead here that we were like just taking a knife to oh, peeling off meat. It but it turns out by the time it gets to your table, you're like, oh, what's that part? I have no idea. Yeah, it just looks like any other cut of meat. So throw in a little tongue salt and let's uh, rip into it, yeah? Oh, that's very soft. Soft? That's really soft. You got a soft one. <laughs> Mine's chewy as heck, but I like the texture. You can like really feel the muscle tissue as you bite through it. You can feel all the tendons in there. It's not juicy at all. Through this whole process, nothing's like gamey. And he is right, all the meat's like a bit sweet, but man, is it heavy. You really can't eat like this every day. No. Unless you're Kenyan, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great meal. Wendy, a cheers. cheers. Thank you. Just on the edge of Nairobi, you'll find the highway populated with fiery grills selling yamachoma, Kenyan grilled meats. Today, it's goat. It's a Sunday today. I think everyone's preparing for the lunch rush. Yes, we have goat grilling behind us. And Roast potatoes, and we have ugali going on. Ugali is like the main kind of carb that goes with a lot of different meals here. Yeah, that goes great with the yamachoma that's being done today. This is what we're after, but it takes a whole lot of prep to make this happen. First, we gotta back up and start with the ugali. Made with corn flour and hot boiling water. It's energy packed, plus making it in pots this huge is a proper workout. So we are in the middle of the ugali making process right now. My man is just pounding the heck out of it. Feeling good? Yeah. Almost finished? Can I try? 
Oh, that is thick. And then flip it. Oh, yeah. Dude, it is about 100 degrees in here. And this is heavy to move. It, yes. So how long, where's my, hold on. Where'd he go? If you're late, talk to people. <laughs> Wait, he got out of here as fast as he could. 10 minutes more, yes. 10 minutes more? Cool, I can do about 30 seconds more. For ultimate freshness, it's advised to place your butcheries right next to your grills. Beef, sheep, goat, ribs, legs, they have it all. Question is, what do I order? This is a goat or cow? Goat. What's your favorite part? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, me too, man. I love ribs. A little bit of fat, a little bit of meat together. Ooh, mwah. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Those could be our ribs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So this is the best part. Yeah. Okay, we got goat ribs here. It's about to go into the smoker in just a moment. Joseph, thank you so much, my man. So this is the area where you guys let people test it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have a little taste, you get them addicted. And then they decide which one to buy. This is a whole leg cap. Look at the size of this. Do people this ever just eat it? Like, this, this. like take a bite right from that? <laughs> Oh God, look at this. That is very nice. You can bite it. Yeah. I'm gonna bite it many times. Yeah. Oh my bro, it's so juicy. Right? So <laughs> yummy. Wow, we have come to the church of meat. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, the flavor is super simple. It's just some salt. A goat already has such an amazing flavor by itself. It doesn't need a lot of help. To go with our meat spread, we're gonna need some more meat. Guys, it's sausage time. Yeah, it's sausage time. Matura. Mutura. Matura sausage. It's basically yeah. a tripe sausage, really. Yeah. This sausage is stuffed with all kinds of organ meats. You have a little bit of everything here. You have some lungs. Yeah, this is maybe a diaphragm, yeah, yeah. stomach. Pancreas. Pancreas. The sausage, lined with intestine, gets stuffed with even more finely chopped organ meats, onions, and spices. It's a dramatic story. We need to put all these innards into the intestines. But our resolution here is this water bottle cut in half with the nozzle end going into the guts and then we're just gonna try to stuff it in there. Once it's stuffed and tied off on either end, it's ready to hit the grill. Cutting it into these thin slices, but the inside is still very coarse and kind of crumbly, falling out. Oh, that's so <laughs> It is bursting with organ meats. All right, here we go, folks. One, two, two three. three. Dance. <laughs> oh man. That's so good. I'm yeah. feeling it. Bro, that's yummy. Mm. I've never had a sausage that's like that coarse inside. Oh, okay. It's all hand chopped, not ground not by ground machine. At all, yeah. Wonderful texture, like very so chewy. chewy yeah. And very fatty. So I'm gonna grab another sausage, put it on a tomato so it doesn't burn my hands off, and throw it back. Mm. Oh. Mm. I feel great. I feel happy inside. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. It's lunchtime and our feast arrives soon after ordering. Goat meat, hot off the grill and sliced at the table. This is fresh. We have a little bit of everything here. This is a complete meal. We have kachumbari, bugali, and this is an indigenous vegetable called managu. So where do we start? You gotta tell me. So you start with the ugali. Actually, I do think this is my first time having ugali. The texture, it is kind of dry on one side, soft on the side of my thumb. Oh, Just like that. it's like Play-Doh. Yeah. So you make a little bowl. Like a little bowl spoon and use that to scoop your vegetables. Vegetables? No, we can do this and then come here. <laughs> yeah, guys, let's start with okay. vegetables. No, let's do it. Oh. oh, this is really fresh. Those greens really stand out. And then the ugali itself is like kind of dry, huh? It is normally dry. Yeah, it's like a more solid mashed potato. Okay. Okay, fine. I mean, let's go with that. All right. <laughs> let's try the nyamachoma, finally. Look at this piece. This piece is nice, fatty. There's a little bit of meat. Let's try it out. Mm. The flavor itself is good. Yeah. It's just very simple, a little bit of salt, brings out the natural flavor of the goat. Yeah. Kenyans love their nyamachoma. Like for socializing on a Sunday like this, mm. it's like they go to, let's order like a bunch of nyamachoma, some beers, some food, and just chill. These look nice. So there's little pieces of meat along here that I'm gonna peel off, this little guy. And this little guy. So this is rib meat. I'm gonna get a little bit of ugali, fill the bowl with meat, and try it out. <laughs> 
I'm gonna lose the tooth. <laughs> They're pretty tough meat. Is this usually what you would expect when you come to a place like this? It depends. Like in, sometimes it's tender, sometimes it's like harder. But I think it's mostly because it's cooled down. There's still some pieces here that are nice and tender. You just gotta dig around for them. Yeah. Don't take a huge bite of a tough piece. You're just gonna be gnawing on it the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> True. Mm. Our Kenyan adventure is just getting started. Next time we join Kenya's Maasai people to get a taste of the tribal life. What, huh? What is happening? Do you want to test? Do you want to test? Sure. sure. Be sure to subscribe and follow along as we eat our way across Kenya with the help of holiday destination safaris. I want to give a huge thank you to Wendy for being here for this fun adventure in Kenya. To follow Wendy's adventures, check out her Instagram. Also for you guys, if you're planning on heading to Vietnam anytime soon, I highly recommend a company called One Trip. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. A, a piece. Yeah. Nailed it. Was that good? Can we get your two? Yeah. <laughs> and we have a secret handshake. Oh my God, I only get this? Jesus. I can get it up. I can never die.